Welcome to Eventful Endeavors, secrets to crafting the perfect celebration. If you're planning an event and looking for useful tips from industry experts, you're in the right place. So get ready to take some notes and we'll dive right in. This is Eventful Endeavors. Hello, I'm Jay Carter with Felix and Fingers, and I am here with Libby Reed, the Gypsy Traveler. And you plan vacations and all kinds of beautiful things across Maui and all over the world, I think. Uh, looking at your bio, it says you've been to 29 different countries and 16 cruises, and you live on Oahu. So do you want to tell me anything more about yourself and your background? Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of it. I mean, being from Canada, I was cold my whole life and uh, fell in love with Hawaii the first time. I came here, my parents actually got married in Hawaii, I got married in Hawaii, and so it just kind of became, I think, uh, a place that was near and dear to our heart and decided to move out here and kind of make it make it home. Yeah, yeah, I think this is a very beautiful home to have. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's dive right into this. So what are some current trends that you're seeing in travel and events and all of those things? What's new? Yeah, I guess... I mean, I am seeing a little bit of a slowdown in p visitors coming to Hawaii just because um, kind of we in travel industry, we talk about pre and post COVID. Everything seems to still be related around that. But post COVID, everybody wanted to come to Hawaii. One, because it was really difficult to go to other countries and it was a lot easier to come to Hawaii, but you were still somewhere tropical, had the beach. It wasn't continental U.S. It was amazing. Um, but now as more places are opening up, you know, um, travel is slowing down a little bit, but I think that's also amazing for people that are visiting Hawaii because it's not as crazy when you come and visit. There's not, you know, millions of people on the island at some of the different spots. Um, pricing is still a little bit high because they are seeing that Hawaii is really popular and everybody wants to come here. But I think as less people start to, you know, go to Europe and they're going to Italy and they're, you know, just going different places, hopefully the pricing is going to come down just a little bit back to, I would say, pre-COVID. It's still uh, post-COVID pricing right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's super true. I think it is definitely different to like look at the occupancy rates of the hotels. And I know that like what I've heard is a lot of the hotels um, kind of adjusted to this new post COVID thing where instead of booking a thousand rooms at $300, they book 50 rooms at, you know, $1,300. So it, it is very different, but it does make a difference in how many people are around and like how many people are in the pool and the beach and everywhere else. So it's kind of like you have very personalized, nice, like, home service for yourself. So I, I totally understand that. That makes sense. Um, so when you're talking and thinking about events, you're thinking about travel and coming out to Hawaii, what are the most cringeworthy things that you hate seeing that you've seen at events or just people out coming out here? I mean, I think in the travel industry, honestly, some of the cringeworthy things I think of are, um, the wor some words that relate to it, like deals and um, come as cheap as possible. And I just don't think that's what Hawaii really is. And if you're going to spend all the time and money to get here, I do think it is a destination where you don't try to do it as cheap as possible because you kind of are going to get what you are going to pay for. And in Hawaii, we know that includes cockroaches and maybe no air conditioning. And it, this is life. We, You and I live here. We know that that is the thing. <laughs> and so sometimes cheap as possible, we want to spend just a little bit more so that you do get, you know, a nicer accommodation that's going to work for you and, and be clean and um, have air conditioning, which is something that we all, I think, appreciate when you live here. And especially if you're traveling, you're not used to some of the warmer weather. Um, so I think yeah. just kind of that verbiage around it to me is more cringeworthy when I see it, just because I hope when people are using those words and maybe looking at um, weddings, events, uh, vacations around, uh, you know, cheap and discount and that kind of thing. I hope in the end they really do get what they want and aren't disappointed in the end. To me, I just think, yeah. oh, no, no, just just, you know, make it exactly what you want it to be so that it's it is. It's a once in a lifetime experience to come out here for a lot of people. So just do it. Enjoy it. Um, even the same, I know some people are trying to save on parking, resort fees. Unfortunately, that's just what Hawaii is right now. And I think it's 
you know, you're again, you're only coming out here once. You might as well just pay that parking fee for a week to have a car to be able to experience and go everywhere you want to go and not come home and wish that you didn't do something that you could have done because you didn't spend $50 extra for, you know, a, a night of parking. It is hard when you look at it and the and the pricing, but I think, you know, thinking about you don't want to come home and and not think, oh, I really want to go back and you might never come back just because of pricing and because it's so far away from a lot of places where people are coming to visit us from. Yeah, for sure. I I mean, there's, I totally agree. I've seen that quite a bit. There's just people that come out and well, oh, well, you know, we don't want to spend the extra little bit on this or the extra little bit on that. And it's like, if uh, everyone can come to Hawaii, I'm not trying to be like, don't come. Like, we don't want you here. We do want you here. We really do. But at the same time, it's just, it's not a place that I feel like is intended for you to come and try to like cut corners and like anything, you know, it's not cheap. And I don't think that like anyone really generally is trying to be like, Hawaii is really cheap. You should come have a budget vacation here. It's like, no, go to Vegas. Like Vegas is cheap. You can go have a budget vacation in Vegas, but Hawaii, not so much, you know? And so I think that you're totally right. A lot of those situations, it's like you're kind of going to make a bad experience for yourself and then not like it, but you chose to do like you you can't do that kind of stuff you know and i've seen the same thing with parking and people oh i don't want to get a rental car and it's like well you should because it's not going to be very fun if you don't like you go to if you're just going to stay at a resort go to mexico you know (laughs) go to an all-inclusive in mexico all those things so yeah i totally agree that totally makes sense um is there anything that is cringeworthy that you've seen at events or weddings or anything like that that you've been to that you've worked on that you've planned anything that you were like ooh, you know I'm not not really i think again relating to literally the last thing i just kind of said the only thing i can think of again is um just what you spend and what you get i have seen that relate to kind of like services in a wedding um you know an example would be photography. Sometimes I see people saying, oh, I can only spend this much. And then I see the photos afterwards and the background is white and it's blown out. And you can't even tell that there's a beautiful, gorgeous green mountain behind you. Um, Where when you look at a photographer that, you know, has studied and has the knowledge and is is, um, charging for what they're worth, you see these beautiful photos where the person is clear and the background is gorgeous and you can see, oh my gosh, they got married in Hawaii or, um, you know, you know, the exact location or you can, you can just tell that they're married in Hawaii versus like a blown out white background because somebody spent less money for that. Um, so I think again, to me, that's again, more cringeworthy because you're, you're spending this money to get married in Hawaii and just making sure that the people you're using, you value them and um, their pricing because they're working hard and that pricing that you pay is going to get you the most amazing experience so that you can take it home and show people, I, d- I got married on this random beach, you can't even tell where I am versus I got married and here's this gorgeous background in in Hawaii. And I yeah. know even my wedding photos, you can just see the background in the mountains and um, they look beautiful. And it wasn't even because of me or my dress or my, you know, us as a couple, it was the background that really made it yeah. absolutely amazing. That's a that's so true and such a like good testament to good photographers where it's like someone yes. that is a professional in what they're doing, doing a good job at what they should be doing, you know. Um cool. So what is a unique or really fun idea that you've seen at a wedding event, something that someone's booked, something that you're like, wow, this was really amazing and everyone should do this? Something cool. I mean, I think personally being in Hawaii, if you're going to do a reception and you're going to pay for a private reception, something fun that you could possibly think about is bringing a luau to your reception site. So it's not just a regular reception, but you're either um, buying out uh, the whole luau site because there are some that are smaller, you know, that have like 75 to 150 people at it first. 500 or a thousand um like on oahu where i'm at there's some really large luau's but you could buy out the whole um luau for 100 you know under 150 people if that's your wedding size and be able to do that as your reception where the dancers are there and the food is there and you know it is almost a reception but it's more of that hawaii luau the culture um i think that's kind of a unique experience that you could do Another one is even yeah. for really small groups, um, being able to charter a catamaran. 
as a reception or something, you know, go out and do a sunset sale for your catamaran where they'll have drinks and appetizers and it's just your group on the catamaran. And I think that's, that could be, you know, a unique experience if you're looking for what do we do after the wedding for our guests and as a reception. Awesome. Yeah, that's fun. I had one of my other guests on the podcast was when I asked him this question, he was like, Oh, the coolest thing is we've had people go and do these helicopter weddings and like get married, mm -hmm. like they take them up and get married on cliffs. And then he's like, and then we make them jump out of the helicopter and go swim in the ocean. I'm like, that's insane. And so I was like, we, I was like, you and I, we need to do this where you guys bring us up to the top of the mountain. We'll play at the top of the mountain. Like, that'd be so cool. And now you're talking about boats. I think 2024, the idea is we need someone to book a catamaran with dueling pianos on the catamaran. Okay. That would be so much fun. <laughs> and I have so people. cool. And you're talking about that looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they went right yeah. up to yeah. and got off of there and got married at the top of the mountain, just the two of them. And yeah, it's a definitely yeah. a huge experience. Yeah. So anyone that wants dueling pianos on the top of a mountain with a helicopter or out on a boat, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Be super fun. I love those ideas. Um, <laughs> okay. So this one's a good question. Any advice that you can offer someone that's just getting started on planning? I think definitely find find your person, reach out to somebody that, you know, you, um, you're seeing. I know a lot of, you know, ways to find somebody that you can trust are on Facebook groups, uh, Google My Business, you know, find that whether it's a planner or um, even like me as a travel advisor, my clients will reach out to me once we plan their trip and they say, oh, I want to get married or we're going to do a vow renewal. You know, how do we find a officiant? or a photographer, or somebody to make lay poos and lays for us to wear. Um, and I'm able to connect them with those, you know, all the different parts. Um, and I think a wedding coordinator can do that as well, you know, pull all the pieces together. Yeah. So just find that trusted person, look at reviews, look at pictures. Um, also make sure that they're registered. Sometimes a lot of businesses I notice are not registered with the state and are kind of operating illegally. So make sure that they're registered, trusted, um, and use that person to help you connect all the pieces. Because like I said, there's so many from planning your trip out here, booking the hotel. Um, if you're bringing yeah. guests, you know, all of them need somewhere to stay. Again, the lays, the music, what you do, the venue, or maybe a, a good beach, photographer, music. There's just so much involved. Yeah, yeah. And I know we were kind of chatting before the interview about how it's important to start this process early, get people, get planners, get, get the people that do this professionally, work with them, work with someone like you, because I know I asked you, I was like, well, what is kind of your involvement in different things? And you were like, well, I can find all of the people and like you organize all of those different people and get them all together instead of like a couple or someone coming on vacation or someone booking an event instead of you have to be like, I need to find all of these different people that do all of those things and vet all of them. That's kind of what you do, right? It is so it makes it a lot easier if you can just be like, here is the package of all of the options. Here's someone that does lays and travel and hotels and like, yeah. Yeah. So. And it's so nice living here and being on, you know, Instagram or some of the Facebook groups and seeing a photographer post pictures. And I'm pulling that information and making my own list of like, oh, I really like this photographer on Maui. I love this photographer on Big Island. I have an amazing Leipo'o um, lady on Oahu. Um, and a ton of my clients have used them for photography and for um, photo sessions and vow renewals. And so just having those people that, you know, I'm seeing that they're good and um, or that person you're working with, trust them to be able to refer them to you. Yeah. Okay. So my next question, it's going to be a two part question is one, I wanted to ask this in the beginning. Um, your name, the gypsy traveler is super cool. And it's spelled gypsy with like ocean sea, which is super cool. And so that I feel like is going to pair into what makes your service unique. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, because I changed it to Gypsy SEA because I have a love for the ocean and kind of tropical destinations. I personally call myself a Gypsy because I'm always traveling. I'm never in one place very long. I've lived in a lot of different places. I'm from Canada. I've been in, been to Hawaii, then left to California, back to Hawaii, and then I travel all in between. So I am. I am a Gypsy traveler. I'm all over the place. And I think a lot of my clients are too. They want to travel. Um, and so one of my biggest specialties, I would say, 
of course, is Hawaii because I live here. I probably book about 90, 95% of Hawaii and people all over the mainland find me because they're looking for somebody that knows Hawaii. I guess it's just really overwhelming for somebody, even say from like, I get a lot of East Coast clients because it's a 13, 11 to 13 hour, you know, flight out here from New York, Boston, it's five hours for them to go to Europe. So they love Europe and the Caribbean and they know that, but Hawaii is just like, they have no idea which island to go to and where to stay and what to do. And that's kind of where I come in of being that expert to be able to know. Um, you li- you literally can list five things that you want to see and do in Hawaii. And I can tell you right away which island you should go to and then which activities you can do. And I can put that all together for you just because I've been to the islands and I, I know which one's good for each yeah. person. Um, so that's definitely kind of my main specialty for sure. Yeah, it helps to someone that's out here, someone that knows, someone that's seen it all, because it's hard to like, it is hard, especially even just like you're saying, like looking at the internet and being like, I want to go to Hawaii. Oh, there's a bunch of different islands. And then people are like, oh, can I just go to all of them? Like, like in the same day? Can I, you know, it's like, no, not really. Like you kind of sort of can island hop, but like you do pick an island and you should go to that island, you know, you start traveling in between them. It takes up big chunks of your day. So yeah, makes a lot of sense to like help pick. And they are all very different. Like, Oahu is not the same as Kauai. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, and and even the yeah. resorts too. I mean, you can Google, you know, where should I stay? And you're going to get thousands of options. Um, I've personally been to probably over 100 resorts on all of the five main islands. Wow. Um, I go and I see them and I take pictures and I, I have my list of ones I like, ones I will never put anybody in because they're terrible. Um, ones that are, and, and ones that fit all different budgets, whether you're a budget traveler, kind of moderate, more luxury, I have options that I would recommend, um, for kind of all those categories, which I think is helpful. Awesome. Okay. So the next part of this, these are going to be just like shorter questions that you can answer as thoroughly or as short as you want. Um, what is the current availability for you to book things for people? How far in advance do you want to book? I do recommend at least two months in advance. That's like the absolute minimum. I mean, it only takes me a week to meet with somebody, book their vacation and be ready for them to kind of go. But there's a lot of pieces um, within that. And I say two months at minimum because with Hawaii, um, the resorts are selling out, the luau's are selling out, amazing catamarans are selling out. So if you're, you know, what is it, February, if you're wanting to go in April, I can't guarantee that anything great is going to be available for you then. So really four months is ideal. And the the furthest out we can book is 11 months. So sometimes I get a lot of families that are booking with me in the summertime for next summer, which is perfect timing. Or right now you're booking for next Christmas, next December, which is perfect mm. timing. Um, giving it, yeah, I would say a minimum of four months is good for Hawaii just because of the, I want to make sure that everything you want to do is available and not have to say, Oh, sorry, this is sold out. Oh, this resort doesn't have this room. Um, I want to make it the best available, best, uh, you know, experience that you're going to have and not put you in Well, this is all that was available. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. What about, do you book small groups and big groups or just small groups or just big groups? Yep. I can do everything. I, you know, I do a lot of couples, um, especially on going on honeymoons or coming out here to get married or celebrating anniversaries. I do a lot of families, multi-generation where grandparents are coming, cousins are coming, but then I can do lots of groups too, uh, such as weddings. You know, if somebody wants um, me to book the wedding package for all of their guests where, you know, if their guest is going to join them, they don't have to worry about where do I fly and where am I going to stay? I can put all that together for like each individual guest. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So what about deposit and cancellation for your services? What are your policies yeah, so there? I work with suppliers um, and we're working off of their um, deposits and cancellation policies. So what I love about this, the deposits is the, the, the deposit is due when you are ready to book. So once you're, you're, you're super excited about the package that I found you, you would do a deposit. It's always the flights up front, just like anywhere. When you book a flight, you have to pay it right, right away. 
Um, and it's $200 per person to um, towards the resort that you're going to stay at. And then after that, nothing is due until 45 days before you leave. That's when the final payment is due. And I'm super flexible with if you want to message me at any time and say, I want to pay towards my vacation. We can do it in small chunks until you get to that final payment amount. Or some people forget about it. And then I just text them two weeks before we're ready to go or um, two weeks before they're 45 days out. And they know their final payments due and they get it all paid. Um, and cancellation policies too, um, I always add in uh, insurance. I think trip insurance, especially pre-COVID, you being on Maui, you know how important it was for the Maui fires. I had so many clients that we had to um, adjust and move them off of Maui to other islands. And I was able to do that because they all had uh, insurance. And anybody that did want to cancel, we had to cancel for any reason. They got future travel credit or they got um, a full refund. And so pre Post COVID, I think insurance is so important to make sure that you're not having to really stick to those cancellation policies. Otherwise, cancellation policies usually, you know, within 45 days, um, 30 to 60 days out, you're going to lose all your money if you had to cancel and you didn't have insurance for a lot of, you know, resorts and car rentals and wedding venues. Even photographers that are taking deposits, they're not going to return that money because that's how they survive too. Um, yeah, so insurance is is huge. Um, even if you're not booking a vacation package, adding it for uh, your venue and your wedding to make sure everything's safe yeah. in case anything happens. Cause we, we all went through it for the Maui fires and there was lo so many stories. I, I can't even go into all of them about, you know, cancellations, whether it was people needing to cancel, whether it was photographers or people who lived on Island who were losing business. It was just, it was not a good yeah. scenario for, for anybody. Yeah. And for everyone listening, Maui is open. Please come. We need you. So don't yes. don't take this as it's still closed. It's not still closed. We do not need you. Closed. It's okay. Everything's fine. It was only a very short amount of time. <laughs> so yes, everything's okay. We need you. It's don't don't not come because of this. You Yes. Cancellation yeah, insurance is always great regardless. <laughs> always get the insurance. I've just in case. I mean, that is a good scenario just because nobody expected that to happen. And insurance, you know, mm -hmm. is is there in that in that case but otherwise since then everybody has been visiting all the islands and and going back to Maui and Kanapali and they've been having really great experiences yeah so um I know that you mentioned you have lists of different vendors that you like to use and preferred vendors for hotels and all the different things are you do you require that your people that are booking with you use those or are you open to anything that they also find and suggest yeah, I'm totally open. I Like I said, I'm kind of that middle person where if they need some ideas, I'm able to say, here's a few that I recommend. But um, a lot of the times they're finding their own and, and that's totally fine. Awesome. So when you are having a trip that or event or whatever it is that you're having, you're booking with people, um, are you the main point of contact or is there someone else that they reach out to while things are going on? For their vacation package, I am definitely the main contact for them. Um, if we're all, if they're booking their package with me, and then also doing you know the wedding or a venue, um, they're gonna want to reach out to that person. You know, if they have a photography question or if they have the venue question, mm -hmm. but I can always be that middle person if they have questions or you know aren't sure who to who to ask in certain scenarios. For sure. So you're yeah. you're kind of like the first step of the team of doing all the things and, For sure. and they can yeah. specialize and talk to the different. <laughs> yep. awesome. I'm kind of, you so ask kind of help. and I can let you know who you ask next or if I can answer it for you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So what about, um, I know that we talked about different islands are better for different people. Um, and you had some things that you wanted to say about which resort to stay on on certain islands and what islands best to visit and better times to visit different places. Do you want to tell me more about that? Yeah. So all of those scenarios are so individualized. Um, I think if you guys um, listen and watch um, the last episode that Jake filmed with Iris, she's the concierge on the island. I loved her responses. I was like, oh, I don't even have to say anything. She said it all for me. Pretty much what she said was, um, everything is super individualized just because somebody, you might have a cousin that came back from Maui and said, oh, you have to go to Maui and stay at this resort. It was amazing. 
that does not mean that you're going to love it because everybody has different styles. How my parents travel and how I travel are totally different. How my best friend travels and how I travel are totally different. We're not going to like the same resorts or maybe even the same island. Um, even out here, I know a ton of people who love a certain island. I'm not going to say which one. And it's my least favorite. And I have a different favorite island. Um, and so what I do is kind of sit down with each person or couple or family group and I ask them a few questions. We call it qualifying. So I'm going to ask you, what do you want to see and experience and do? And from this information, I'm easily able to say, oh, this is the island you need to go to. And if you have multiple days, maybe you'll even get two islands out of that because um, we don't want to send you to too many islands in a limited time. But if you have over a week, um, sometimes I like to get you to see another island as well. And that goes with resorts too. Every resort's going to be different. And so it's good to sit down with you and figure out exactly what you want to see and do. And do you want to be on the beach or across the street from the beach or up in the mountains? There's so many scenarios. Um, so it's important to ask all those questions so I can get you at the best place for you. And it might not be the best place that somebody else has recommended, but it's going to be exactly for what you want based on what you've you know said. Awesome. So it's highly personalized. And you take everyone's dreams and make them a reality, right? For sure, awesome. yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining. I so appreciate you answering these questions and talking about your service. And for everyone listening, you'll be able to see her website and all of the different things for you to book your events and your travels and everything as part of this podcast. But thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks for listening to another episode of Eventful Endeavors, Secrets to Crafting the Perfect Celebration. We hope to have left you with some actionable ideas for your own event. If you like the show, please subscribe and definitely leave us a review. We read every comment. So until next time, happy planning and see you soon on Eventful Endeavors.